We good to go, Jenny? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I just want to again acknowledge that I'm on the unceded territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations, and advise that uh, this morning I spoke with the Lieutenant Governor and advised her that we were going to await the counting of the final ballots. And uh, I want to tell a story about that, if I could. Uh, after the last election, you'll remember the most famous constituency in all of BC was Courtney Comox. Our candidate was ahead by nine votes on election night. I was taking the ferry back to Victoria the next day. I was in the cafeteria and a woman came up to me and she said, Ron and Ray Leonard's won by more than nine votes. I know that because I mailed mine in, so she won by ten. And that reminded me how important every vote is. And it reminded me that there are hundreds of thousands of people who are waiting for their votes to count. And so we will, of course, respect the process, as I said last night, and we'll await the final count. But in the meantime, there's work to be done. I'm returning to Victoria, and I'm going to get back to it tomorrow. Uh, we have a lot ahead of us. We need to continue to work on our climate action plan to continue to lead the continent in protecting our natural environment for future generations. We need to continue to work with Indigenous peoples to make sure the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples makes some sense in every corner of British Columbia. The pandemic is our highest priority. British Columbians understand that we need a government focused on their needs. I talked about this last night, and I'm sure there'll be some questions about that today. But uh, I'm very proud of the team that we put together. I'm proud of the campaign that we ran. And I'm proud of British Columbians for stepping up and saying, let's get this behind us. Let's work on the challenges that we have ahead of us. And I'm ready to do that. So with that, Jenny, I'm happy to answer any questions. A reminder to media on the line, please press star one to enter the queue. Our first question today is from Tanya Fletcher, CBC. Hi there, I guess we can call you Premier uh, once again. Uh, so first of all, Premier, we saw some uh, perhaps surprising flipped seats in traditionally liberal strongholds like Richmond and the Fraser Valley. What do you attribute those gains to? Well, I believe that uh, for three and a half years, we focused on the needs of all British Columbians, firstly. Uh, I was reaching out always to uh, communities, to people, to businesses in every corner of the province, talking about the values that I wanted to bring to government and the values that I was seeing in communities like Richmond, Langley, and out through the Fraser Valley to Abbotsford. I, I would have liked to have seen better results uh, in uh, rural British Columbia, and I'll continue to work hard to build better relationships and better understandings of the challenges in rural British Columbia. But uh, we had some outstanding candidates like uh, the mayor of Mackenzie, Joan Atkinson. She's still the mayor of Mackenzie. I'm going to still be working with her to represent her issues and her values and, and the values of uh, the north or the center of BC in Victoria. Uh, Tony Boot is still the mayor of Summerland. And so I'll be working with Tony and others and everyone across BC to make sure that we can bring forward a government that works for everybody. But back to your specific question, Tanya, I think that the reason uh, our message resonated in Richmond Richmond, it resonated in, in, in Langley, is because we were talking about things that matter to those families. Uh, seniors care, child care, education, health care, transportation. Those were the issues that were important to those, uh, those uh, British Columbians, and, and that's why they voted for our team. Tanya, do you have a follow-up? I do, thank you. Uh, going back to that, I mean... Our next question is from Richard Zisman, Global. Something you were mentioning there, Premier, around not being able to break through in out rural British Columbia, outside of Metro Vancouver and Vancouver Island. Why did you think your message did not resonate with the people of Skeena, Fraser Nicola, Columbia River, Revelstoke, and so many other areas in the province outside of that Metro Vancouver and Vancouver Island area? Well, I'm going to have to do some more work, uh, clearly, to, to get to those communities. Uh, having a majority government uh, will allow me to get out of Victoria. I've been, as you know, uh, tied in the legislature for big chunks of the year. And, and I'll be able to travel now more freely to other parts of British Columbia and be the spokesperson for the issues that we're bringing forward that, that will benefit rural British Columbia. We have some serious issues in the forest sector, and, and I'm going to keep working on those, and I'll have more hands-on uh, work there, and we'll be recreating our cabinets in the weeks ahead uh, to focus on making sure that we can revitalize the forest industry and we can do it in a way that will keep uh, uh, rural communities uh, safe, uh, secure, and healthy during the pandemic. Those are those are the issues that are going to be mattering to all British Columbians, and, and I'm going to take those head on. 
Richard, do you have a follow-up? You talk about traveling. There's still a pandemic going on, which could potentially make that problematic as well. And I think a lot of people will be looking at your promises and the big one, the $1,000 direct deposit into people's bank accounts. When should British Columbians expect to get that money? Well, we're going to certainly we'll await the final results. Uh, a new government uh, will be sworn in, uh, and then we'll look at uh, how much uh, time there's left uh, for a legislative session. I know there's a couple of issues that we've got on the order paper. They, of course, will have to be re reintroduced, and there's a, a number of other issues that we have uh, coming from the campaign. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get back into the legislature, but I don't want to uh, make a promise I might not be able to keep, Richard. I, we'll have to see how long it takes to uh, finalize the count, to then uh, install all a new government and then get the legislature back in order. Our next question is from Justine Hunter, Globe and Mail. Thank you. Um, so you got the mandate you wanted and uh, I'm wondering what do you do now about uh, responding to the pandemic that you couldn't do before? Well it's a whole host of things uh, quite frankly and again uh, now that uh, we're, we're, we're in a place where the election is behind us. Uh, I want to continue to build relationships with other uh, uh, political leaders in the legislature and make sure that we can get back to that place we were in seven months ago where we were all focused on the needs of British Columbians, individuals, businesses and communities. Uh, we, you know, we were talking about that in March and April and May, but by the time we got into June, July and August and certainly into September, uh, that that happiness was gone and I want to reestablish that and I'm hopeful that now that the election is behind us we'll be able to do that and I believe that's what I set out, set out to do and I'm I'm grateful that I was successful. Do you have a follow-up Justine? I do thank you. Um, so you talk a lot about how we're not out of the woods in terms of the pandemic and and there's certainly no sign of an effective vaccine for everybody uh, you know on the immediate horizon so can you describe the challenges facing BC in the coming year in terms of the pandemic well there's a whole range of uh, challenges for public health challenges of course uh, the impact on the economy our tourism industry with our borders closed and continue to be closed for this foreseeable future uh, a global economy quite frankly that is still uh, destabilized by COVID-19. Uh, again, I, I want, I hope British Columbians understand that we are not unique here in British Columbia. The rest of the world is grappling with the same challenges we are. Uh, I believe the best way forward is to make sure that government is there focused on the needs of individuals, businesses and communities and we're going to be able to do that coming into the fall and into next spring as we prepare a budget which will be again one of the most extraordinary budgets ever tabled in British Columbia. Our next question is from Wolf Dubner, Black Press. Hello, Black Presser. Uh, Premier Horgan or Premier Elect Horgan, um, in which specific areas, uh, which specific policy areas do you plan to work uh, with uh, BC Greens, for example? Uh, the riding here, Sound North and the Islands, uh, re elected uh, Adam Olson. Uh, it's been a long calling for uh, transit improvements. Uh, what, what, if any, specific improvements uh, for transit, for example, uh, do you foresee for this riding? Uh, even though it, it is not uh, part of your government, uh, governing uh, um, party. Well, I, I was born and raised in Saanich. Uh, I know the community very, very well. It's my home. Uh, I live in Lankford, but I consider uh, southern Vancouver Island to be my home, and I'm very well aware of the challenges in, in Adams constituency and Lana's constituency in, in Oak Bay Gordon Head and even up the island. Uh, so uh, I'm going to continue working to make sure we're delivering the best services we possibly can in a cost-effective manner. And who, who represents the seat matters not to me. Uh, we're building a hospital in Dawson Creek, and uh, we did not win Dawson Creek. We're building a hospital in Fort St. James. We did not win Fort St. James. These issues don't matter to me. Uh, what is needed and and how quickly can we deliver it? That's how I'm going to approach the next four years. Wolf, do you have a follow-up? Yes, I do. Um, during the last three and a half years, uh, you needed the support of the uh, BC Greens uh, to govern. Uh, you no longer need them now, uh, but you've also signaled uh, some, uh, some measure of cooperation with them. And uh, how, how do you plan to work with them specifically? Uh, and and uh, through which uh, parliamentary channels, uh, which parliamentary forums do you plan to engage the, uh, uh, the opposition, as, as you said earlier? Well, the, the confidence and supply agreements is, was for the last parliament. Uh, the parliament ahead has not yet been configured. Uh, we'll have to see how the final votes go. Uh, but I will do what I've done from the first day I stepped into the legislature. It is an honour and a privilege to represent your community and your neighbours in the House, uh, People's House. 
and I'm going to work with every single MLA as best as I can because I know how frustrating it was when I was an opposition member, when I brought forward good ideas and the needs of my community, oftentimes I was dismissed because my neighbors didn't vote the right way and I will never, never uh, govern that way. If people need help, I don't care how they vote, where they live, we're going to do our level best to help them. I just said level best again. I can't help myself. That's what I do. Our next question is from Ish Sharma Darpan. Hi, Premier. Just wondering um, what will the uh, relationship with the teachers look like? Uh, they were quite frustrated uh, throughout this whole pandemic. Um, we've had an outbreak in the interior in Kelowna. Um, a lot of them did also ended up uh, voting for the Greens. So how do you hope to get uh, the teacher support back? Well, I, I, first of all, I don't think uh, that uh, any group of people vote any particular way. I have my my daughter-in-law is a teacher, so uh, I, I hear very clearly uh, every week uh, the challenges that she faces in, in her school. And I understand that uh, parents and teachers and children are anxious about COVID-19 and uh, the start the restart of the school year. And we're going to continue to work every single day to make sure that teachers, support staff, administrators, parents and kids are safe. We've made that commitment from the beginning and we'll continue to do that. I would suggest though that you look at other jurisdictions and I know that oftentimes comparing yourself uh, to other people is oftentimes self-serving but British Columbia's outcomes when it comes to COVID-19 are off the charts better than every other jurisdiction in the country save except perhaps uh, the maritime provinces because of their size and their geographic isolation. In terms of uh, the K-12 restart, we're in better place than Alberta, Saskatchewan, Ontario, uh, Manitoba and, and, uh, and Quebec. So uh, we're going to keep working at it and, and it's not a rigid plan, it's a flexible plan and that's exactly what we need to do. Be flexible, make amendments as we need to, make sure everyone's safe. Ish, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, um, Premier, I was just wondering, um, you know, you had quite an orange wave in Surrey. Um, some of the main key ridings saw NDP candidates elected. Uh, people here have been wondering about a hospital. They've been wondering about uh, the whole uh, Massey Tunnel, which has one of the worst bottlenecks. When are we going to see some of that infrastructure actually take shape and form? Well, with respect to the hospital, uh, I have been absolutely crystal clear on this, as is Adrian Dix. Uh, we put in place a concept plan where none existed. The former government did nothing, nothing to advance health care needs in Surrey. We established two, two urgent primary care centres to connect patients to the health care providers they need in Surrey. We bought the land because the previous government had sold the land that we had bought in the 1990s for a second hospital and we're building it. I, I, don't, I hope that I don't have to answer that question again. A second hospital is coming to Surrey. It's going to be located in Cloverdale and it's going to have a cancer uh, component attached to it because we have a 10-year cancer plan. I'm very excited about not just what we can do to improve the lives of people in Surrey but in every part of British Columbia by delivering on what their needs are rather than focusing on politics. Next question is from Rob Buffum, CTV. Are you there, Rob? Oh, hi. Good morning, Premier. Congratulations. Thank um, you. I guess my first question is, my, my first question is, you know, in your first 100 days, you've got this strong mandate. Are there any items that would be of interest to folks on Vancouver Island that may be coming your way? Well, uh, continuing uh, to move BC forward uh, with the focus on making sure everybody benefits from uh, our strong economy and our public health measures. Uh, that, that's going to be the preoccupation for the next 100 days without any doubt. But there's a whole number of issues, as you know full well, Rob, on the island and in other parts of British Columbia that require immediate attention. And uh, as soon as the final votes are counted and a new government is, is sworn in, uh, we'll be talking about those issues, perhaps uh, in the legislature or perhaps through some other means to make sure that British Columbians understand the direction we're going to go. Uh, we've laid it out in the election campaign. We're going to keep focusing on building a health care system that's there for people. Uh, our education system needs more schools. It needs more teachers. We're going to have to address, as the previous questioner asked, some of the, the, the challenges within the, healthcare, or within the education sector. And I think working cooperatively with teachers, with uh, support workers, is the best way forward. So I, I wouldn't pull any one thing and say this is going to be our focus other than keeping people safe, healthy and secure uh, as we come through the pandemic. Rob, do you have a follow-up? I do. You, um, you have a resounding majority, but despite campaigning very hard in Sunny Personnel and Adam Olson's writings, 
You didn't knock them off. I'm wondering what that says to you about appetite for green policies, particularly on the island. It looks like they've brought that to the mainland. And whether that, although there's no CASA agreement and you've got a majority, whether that may influence your, your government going forward. I'll be influenced by good ideas wherever they come from. That's uh, how I live my life and that's how I expect to govern for the next four years. Uh, I don't care where an idea comes from. If it makes sense, uh, we're going to implement it. That's how I will approach working with uh, all members of the legislature and those who are not inside the legislature, quite frankly. Uh, uh, there are a whole bunch of views in the community and they need to be heard and, and I intend to listen. Our next question is from Lisa Yuzda, News 1130. Are you there? Yes, good morning, Premier, and congratulations on a good night last night. Regarding specifically schools, is there going to be some sort of oversight or audit to assess the lack of cash that schools got federally and provincially before the election for pandemic responses to make sure that they're using it for what they're supposed to be using it for, like hiring teachers and other um, things specifically related to the pandemic? I'm sorry, Lisa, I could not make any of that out. You're in a bit of an echo chamber. I. Uh, I tried. Uh, I, I know you were talking about the school system, and I, I'd refer you back to my previous answer. We've been flexible. We have to be flexible as circumstances change in our schools, whether they're on the island, whether they're in the interior, uh, whether they're in Fraser Health. We need to make sure that uh, every school has a, a response plan, every district has uh, protocols, and that involves uh, building those protocols with teachers, support workers, and parents. And we'll continue to do that as long as we have to until we get through this pandemic. Lisa I hope that comes closely, so I, I really did not hear uh, your question. Do you want to try again with a follow-up, Lisa? I'm going to try. Oh, I just wanted better. to know specifically... Oh, good. Great. Yeah. Um, I just want to know specifically more about if, if there's going to be some sort of specific oversight to audit or assess the whack of money provincially and federally that was schools received for pandemic response that was supposed to be used for hiring teachers, for altering spaces, for things like that, that we're hearing from districts, is, from teachers, but is not happening. So is there going to be some sort of audit of districts to ensure this money is being spent as it should? Well, I'll, I'll certainly get a briefing on that uh, this coming week, and, and I'll be able to better answer that question. But I do know a quarter of a billion dollars of uh, federal and provincial money was put specifically in the at, right at the start of the school year into addressing those issues. Now, the challenge with the, the late arrival of that money is that we might not have been able to get it into communities as fast as we would have wanted to, but we have been moving uh, all governments, uh, municipal, federal and provincial, at lightning speed to respond to the pandemic. And, and I think now with a, with a clear majority and a focus on making sure we deliver on these issues that uh, we're going to make sure those dollars that were approved are being delivered and, and for the purpose that we wanted them to, to keep people safe and make sure we've got the, the staff in place to protect uh, each other uh, and uh, our kids. That, that's our commitment and we're going to live to that. We have time for one more question today. I'll be from Keith Baldry Global. Hi, Premier. Uh, congratulations uh, for your victory last night. Just wondering if you think one of the reason for your expanded victory and in reaching into areas that you don't normally win is that is your government and party now less ideologically rooted than perhaps some of your pre predecessors uh, such as the Barrett government or the Harper government? Well, th thank you for that. And I know you've, you've been covering uh, government and politics for some time, Keith, and uh, you would probably be a better judge of the answer than I. But I will say that I am fiercely proud uh, to be uh, the Premier of British Columbia and a New Democrat Premier. Uh, I followed, as a, from a historian's perspective, not as a, uh, an active participant in the Barrett years. And the legacy of Dave Barrett's government is being felt still to this day uh, in every corner of the province. I worked for Mike Harcourt, uh, and I'd like to think that I've styled my approach after Mike's, which was, you know, everybody has got a point of view and you need to listen to all of them. And uh, I, I would say that I'm focused on making sure that we're delivering for people, and that takes a variety of forms and a variety of perspectives. And I am not, uh, I would have to say, I, I, I'm not rigidly tied to any particular line on a, on a graph. I'm attached to making sure that we're doing the best we can, my level best, to lift people up, and that's what I'll keep doing. And you can, others can characterize it as a, an ideology or, or a, a, some other perspective. Keith, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yeah, it's just uh, you had seven cabinet ministers uh, retire. You've got a lot of new blood. 
you anticipate when you create your new cabinet that it's going to include some of the newcomers or is it just going to be drawing from uh, your existing backbench? Well, uh, that's, uh, we'll have to see uh, what happens with the final count, Keith. Uh, my only regret is that Carol James will no longer be sitting beside me, and, and that is a hole in my personal life uh, and in the government that it will be very, very hard to fill. And, and other, beyond that, we have, uh, before the election, we had a great team uh, in the front bench and those working on committees to keep the, the government moving. Uh, we have new people coming in. I'm very excited about some of the young faces uh, that are going to bring new perspectives and, uh, and new parts of British Columbia that will be at our table, some for the first time in, in decades. And, and that, that will give me uh, an embarrassment of riches, as they say, and, and I think most political leaders will be delighted to have uh, the, the range of perspectives that I have at my disposal to build a cabinet to keep BC moving forward for everyone. Thanks, everyone. That's all the time we have. Thanks, everyone. I'm going home. To bed. <laughs>